My name is Ashley Garnica. I should have graduated with the class of 2010 from Prospect High School. Growing up, my father always told me that crying was weakness, and hearing that over and over again has almost made it impossible for me to open up with anyone. So telling my story is always a big deal for me. My family moved around a lot when I was young, leaving me with no real long-term friends. Worse if you're a new kid at school. Out of six schools, I was bullied at almost every single one. My physical bullying started in fifth grade and followed me into sixth. One time in sixth grade, we were during, during a spelling bee, a girl walked by me and kicked me, my knee backwards for no reason. Then, after three years of not being bullied or harassed, it returned to me during my sophomore year. Through a series of events, I was put right in the middle of a very dramatic situation where over half the girls in my grade had turned against me. They completely isolated me and would yell at me as I walked around school and threaten to jump me. I had followed what I felt was morally right and the consequence was that for roughly two months I had to spend my break and lunch in the girls' bathroom or in empty hallways of my high school in order to avoid getting verbal threats or things thrown at me as I walked down the crowded halls. At one point it got so bad that my mom had to take time off work to come and pick me up from school because a carload of girls was waiting to jump me. I was routinely threatened and harassed throughout my sophomore year, and despite my attempts to get help, I was the one called into the dean's office many times with threats of being suspended and expelled. Everyone I once had thought was my friend turned their backs on me. There was no one on campus to get real help from. From there, things just got worse, to the point where in October of my junior year, I completely stopped going to all my classes and was leaving campus most of the time. I was enduring gossip, rumors, death threats, and anonymous messages on a website called Formspring, where kids from school were posting that I was worthless and not wanted around. You saw the statistics. Kids find ways to stay at home when they're being bullied because there's nothing else that can be done. My troubles at home with my mom and my terrible experiences at school meant that fi finally I was coming to a breaking point. Spring break my junior year was when I had had enough. I felt that if I couldn't turn to my mother, then there was no one that I could turn to and I had no one to talk to. Around 2 a.m. the morning, one morning during spring break of my junior year, I walked outside to the intersection of Winchester and Knowles and lay down. With only my phone, a t-shirt and shorts and socks, I was hoping at least one car was not paying attention and would finally give me what I wanted. I cannot, I cannot explain what I was going through my head. While laying there, my phone kept ringing and ringing. It was my best friend who just knew that something was wrong. Finally, I answered, hoping to distract her or get her to stop calling. She ended up talking me out of doing it and getting up and going back inside my house, reminding me that at least one person cared your life was worth living. After all that had happened, in two and a half years at Prospect, I dropped out and took the California High School equivalency exam and passed with flying colors. However, I feel I was cheated out of a high, full high school education because of the bullying and harassment I faced during my years in high school.